Hi everyone, this is Elena of The Witch's Box, and I'm here today with another episode of Witch Booktube, and holy cow. I have had this book in my to-be-read pile for, it could be very well, almost a year and a half to two years, and I even featured this book in a book haul that I did, like, I don't know, 83 years ago on Booktube, I don't even, it's been that long, but this book, The Seasonal Soul, I <laughs> can't. So beautiful. The Seasonal Soul, A Mystic's Guide to Inner Transformation by Lauren Abetta. Listen, look at the edge. Come on. This book is a work of art. This is the back. And then this is the spine. And it's by Chronicle Books. I remember when I did the book haul, I talked about the inside of this book and the exquisite design of this book and how much this book, just having it in my hands, gave me joy. And then it promptly got buried under the whole thing. I think that I owe you all probably a vlog again. Not that I owe you, but that I feel I need to. Uh, because I'm having some serious challenges, everyone, with the book situation that I've got going on and the reading desires that I seem to be having right now. So maybe I'll mention that a little bit at the end of this video, or maybe I'll just like finish this video and then do another one. We'll see. But for now, let me read to you the bio for the author and for the illustrator, because this illustrator... I can't. So this is about the creator and this is a letter that she wrote directly to you. So I love bios that are written in first person. They're different. You don't see them very often, but there's something about it that's kind of endearing and accessible and makes it things more personalized. So I'm going to read it from the book the way she wrote it. Hello, I'm Lauren Aletta, not a beta, sorry. I'm Lauren Aletta. I have spent my whole life completely and utterly besotted with exploring the mysterious mechanics of all things intuition, energy, and soul. The premise that everything is alive captured me because from as early as I can remember, I could hear, feel, sense, know, and see things, information that I would energetically perceive off of people, objects, businesses, and environments. You see, I pick up the energy missions, stories, and soul potentials off my surroundings. The best thing is, it's not a special gift specific to me. Everyone is born with the ability to tune in and harness their intuitive and energetic skills. My wild and passionate purpose is in teaching, writing, and creating tools and resources on all things intuition, energy, and soul. Nothing lights me up more. We're at the most incredible time in human history where we're becoming increasingly aware of our soul selves and the grander potentials of our humanness. It feels so darn unreal to be able to share what I know with you. Okay, that's beautiful. So this is about the designer. I'm Tegan, the hand behind all the visuals. I work closely with Lauren over the years to create Lumina Tarot and Connected and Free Oracle Deck and the Soul School monthly ebook series. I create digital art and design for creative professionals looking to add a personal touch to their vision. When I'm not designing, I love painting and spending time with my family in Brisbane, Australia. So this is the bio page. This is going to be just as much show and tell as it is about the book. So let's get into it again. Can I just show you? So really quickly, this is all a yummy matte satin finish. And then all of this is a raised shiny white, like embossing. This is the most beautiful book. I cannot express to you how much joy this gives my heart. Okay. So let me read to you the table of contents and then, and then I don't even know where to start. All right, table of contents, embracing the adventure, preparing for the adventure, and it's a guide to the terms and methods of this book. Part one is winter into the cave with tools for the alchemist. So each chapter will come with what she calls tools for the alchemist. And I'll explain a little bit about what that is. Part two is spring, the glimmering sun. Part three is summer, run with the wolves. Part four is autumn, the fading light. Then there's a chapter on coming full circle, chakra guide, crystal guide, glossary, and then about the creator and the designer. So in this book, you're going to explore each season and its unique attributes, the divine purpose behind each season, the distinct phases or signposts within each season. So you know what to expect. And when you are in the thick of a snowstorm, lapping up the and basking the sun or feeling the soft winds of change on your face. And then tools for the alchemist is a section, which is a collection of activities tailored to keep you oriented to your true North. This is a book very, very honed in on, finding your inner voice and your inner intuition through the natural calibration to the seasons around you. 
We've had books like this before, absolutely, but the way she describes it and the way she shares these beautiful exercises with you, I wouldn't say witchy light in a way to disparage it, but it's accessible to everyone, even if you don't identify as a witch. But the practices are incredibly mindful and very transformative and powerful. She's got so much in this book for that. This is great at this time of the year, especially because at least me in Southern California, this is when I really start to feel the seasons. Because really, we have maybe like six, eight months of summer and then four months where things get a little different. Especially here, I get a little bit more of an, a seasonal change because I'm up at a high altitude in the mountains. But Southern California is a pretty homogenous season all year round. At this time of the year, it's when I really start to feel just how calibrated to the seasons I am. I also internally begin to feel like, oh, I can actually just release what I'm holding onto and lean back into the season and let the season carry me naturally. Like right now we're in fall. Right now we're in between the time that I'm recording this, we're in between Samhain and winter. And this is a very liminal space in the year. There's a time here where we are all retreating. There's something about the retreat and still working beyond the veil, even though Samhain is over. It's colder, right? The leaves are changing. I mean, it's cozy season. It's all cozy season. This book feels super cozy when you just look at the cover. I feel like even the spring and summer activities and practices, there is something about it that's so deeply comforting because it's also a reminder, specifically it's a reminder of we go through our own seasons. We also go through the seasons that the earth is going through. Those things dance and change with one another. And it's such an integral part of being connected as witches. We really struggle with this right now. We are in a very fast paced, very frenetic, very noisy time in history. It becomes harder and harder and harder as witches specifically, but everyone as well, to continue that connection within to our own internal rhythms and to the internal rhythms and external rhythms of the planet. So books like this are fantastic. It's not specifically the wheel of the year in terms of the Sabbath and what the lore is. It's not that. It's really about what are the energetic rhythms and notes to each season and how to calibrate with those. So beautiful. The other thing about this book is that because we're approaching the winter season holiday like season where we've got several different holidays where people give gifts to each other. This book is a gorgeous, gorgeous gift to people who are either witchy or not. It's that versatile, but also that good and beautiful. Like this would be a beautiful piece on your coffee table for this time of the year through fall and winter, just because look at it. It's so pretty. Here's my one con to this book. And then I'm going to show you the beauty going on inside the book. My one con, you know me, you know me and my need to uh, read a book and then write in the margins and take notes and add my thoughts and the yada yada, blah, blah, blah. I couldn't do that to this book. And I could, and it was like, look, I tried to preserve the spine. My reading was really uncomfortable because it was like, I would do this and I would do this because I just didn't even want to do, I'm so abusive. This is something I need to look into for myself. I'm really quite abusive with books because I want to get in there. Like I want to open it up. I want to see it. I want to write in it. This was so beautiful. I didn't want to, I didn't want to ding it. I didn't want to bend the spine. I didn't want to write in it because it would just destroy the beautiful design on every single page, you guys. So that is my one con. As far as cons go towards a book, it's not a big deal. And it's just something I need to get over because I was also thinking about this is such a beautiful book that I definitely do want to have it on our coffee table. I want it to be an art piece, but something that when people come over to visit, they want to reach for this book and look through it. We're going to take about 18 hours now for me to show you the inside of this book because there is, oh, see, I got to open it and I don't want to. Come on. Every single page is a work of art. Come on, isn't that gorgeous? It's just so gorgeous. I mean, get this book, if only just to give yourself the gift of beauty, but then there's also such amazing wisdom, encouragement, affirmations, mindfulness practices. You know I'm all about all of that. I love looking through this book so much that it almost didn't matter to me what was written inside. 
I can't imagine how long it took them to coordinate and put this book together because the amount of illustration in this book is extraordinary. Every single page. This reminds me a lot of the book that I reviewed. I want to say maybe it was a year ago around this time because I remember we were entering winter or we were maybe in the fall when I did the Fire Cider book review. That book was not only chock full with amazing information that everyone should have, every single witch should have that book, but the illustration, the entire book was one gorgeous work of art. This is what this reminds me of. It's it's the same thing, just different topic, different type of art, but it's just, it's just beautiful. Can you just imagine yourself hanging out on a cool, chilly weekend in your PJs, curled up on a yummy couch with a yummy blanket, and all you're going to be doing for that entire time is reading this book and chilling out with some hot tea or hot chocolate or coffee? That sounds like my weekend right there. It's about really recognizing the season within you, right? And understanding that we talked about this. Where have we talked about this before? We've talked about this, I think, in our Witch Meditate series here on YouTube. There's a, um, a guided meditation on really checking in with which season you happen to be in, because it could be very different from the season that's outside of you. This is very similar in the sense that she's really guiding you through checking in with not only how do you respond to the season outside in the world, because we have the same routine. We work every week, do the same thing every single day, no matter what the season is. Yeah, maybe you'll have a vacation here and there. Maybe you spend more time outside when it's summer, but each season will affect you differently. And we don't really have lifestyles that will allow for the check-in. How have things changed? How would my schedule be different if I really responded to my body's intuitive need around this time? So she helps you identify that, but she also helps you identify what seasonality sounds like and looks like and feels like within yourself, specifically for you and who you are. So as a witch, this not only helps you tune into where you are seasonally yourself and where how you respond naturally to the seasonality outside of you, but it also helps hone that capacity that you have for listening to your intuition, listening to your internal wisdom and being so tapped into that, that that's what you hear loudest above all the noise and all the push and pull of society and your life, right? That's the voice that gets louder and easier to hear because we're honing that muscle. And this book so beautifully helps you with that. Can we just, I mean, I'm just going to keep, let's stay here for a few hours. I can show you every page. Just exquisite, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful job. I am super sad at myself that it took me this long. That it took me this long to get to this book. I highly recommend it. This is like a five plus 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 plus. As much for the information as the art, but also as well as the vibe when you read it. There is a comforting, nourishing, nurturing, cozy. It's similar to me as how I felt when I read Rachel Henderson's The Scent of lemon and rosemary. There's just this gorgeous coziness, comfort and nourishment when you're reading it on a level that's much deeper than intellectual, right? Because sometimes, most of the time, if not all the time, hopefully when we read books, we're receiving mental nourishment, but this was so much more. I love the mixture of typeface and what looks like script or handwriting that hails back to like my art journaling days. I'm going to show you a few more and then I'll stop. But I, my goodness, let me see. I mean, look. Come on. Isn't that beautiful? So obviously, if you are into art and books, this book is also going to hit you at that level as well. It's just, it's, it's sweet. It's beautiful. It's informative. I think it's potent. It, it really is a great support for your practice and for your um, path. And it's got the amazingly added bonus that it's just gorgeously created and put together. Yeah, I don't know what else to say other than get it. And if you get it, I want to hear what you think. I want to hear what your favorite page is. What your favorite exercise and season in here is. There's just so, so much. I really appreciate that she wrote this book. It's just, come on now. Okay, this is gonna be the last one. Beautiful. The Seasonal Soul. It's gorgeous. It's an exquisite book. 
Highly recommend it. Let me know if you do get it. And we'll talk about it in the comment section below. And again, also, I think that this would make an amazing gift for the holidays for that person in your life that you know is into mindfulness and introspection and deep self-inquiry. A great book for that. It's also a really great book if you wanted to go through it, I think, with some modifications. But if you wanted to go through it with a group, I'm going to start pointing that out to all of you more and more because now we're kind of in a place where we're we're leaving our houses more. We're getting together more. It could be great to have a book to follow with a group of people so that you can study together and have that enriching experience. So like that. All right, my friends, thank you for hanging out with me. If you've read the book, let me know down below. As always, please subscribe, ring the bell and all the things that you need to do. And I will see you next week. Bye.